expect the Chinese authorities to immediately release uh, Mr. Gui Minhai from detention and to allow, allow him to reunite with his family, to get consular support and medical support in line with his rights, because as you underlined, he is a, a 3D citizen and thereby also a citizen of the European Union. Last year, a bookseller in Hong Kong by the name of Gui Minhai went missing. He reappeared in Chinese custody, detained for apparently selling books critical of the Communist Party. He was then eventually let go, only to disappear again. And then to reappear, and you can guess what happens next. Police in China have once again arrested Gui. Reports say he was on a train going to Beijing and was in the company of Swedish diplomats. Well, for more on this, let's talk to Xu Kinduo in Beijing. He's a political analyst at China Radio International. And in Hong Kong, political scientist and democracy activist Joseph Cheng. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Xu Kinduo, incredible audacity from the Chinese. He was with Swedish diplomats when they took him. Why was he such a threat? Uh, no, first of all, like uh, I don't see there's any connection between his uh, taking, being taken away and uh, you know, being in front of the two diplomats. Remember, diplomats enjoy the diplomatic immunity, but not him. You know, he probably, uh, he, uh, you know, like uh, broke the Chinese law uh, many years ago and he served uh, two years in prison terms, like uh, uh, starting from late 2015 until late last year. Uh, so, and it's, it's not about the audacity, you know, you know taking him away. Uh, obviously, the Chinese police have their own reason. So far, it's not clear Hello. yet. But I think the best way to defend him right now probably is to hire Hello. a lawyer instead of criticizing China or ask for immediate release uh, from the Chinese. Okay, so Joseph here. Cheng, hire a lawyer. Maybe they Hello. have a good reason Hello. for taking him. Well, there is, of course, the issue of the rule of law since the Chinese authorities has been preaching the advocacy of the rule of law, there's also the issue of China's international prestige, international image and reputation. Apparently, the Chinese authorities are willing to pay the price, so to speak, so as to create a deterrence effect against publishers publishing anything which are disrespectful or dangerous to the reputation of Chinese leaders. Apparently, uh, some people thought that lower-ranking public security officials took uh, Gui from Thailand to China without the knowledge of someone higher up. But since the issue was, since the issue has been defended by the official media, uh, like the uh, Global Times, so it is quite obvious that the Chinese authorities at the highest ranks are aware of the incident. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Xu Kinduo, the foreign ministry had said, we have no idea what you're talking about, but Chinese state media has defended the arrest. What do you make of that point by Joseph Cheng, that China doesn't really care? This guy can be from Hong Kong, he can be a publisher from Hong Kong, he can be a Swedish citizen <laughs> as well, but if he criticizes the Communist Party, he's going to jail. That seems to be the message. <laughs> No, obviously that's a wrong message. That's not the message. Uh, if you look for criticism against the Chinese government or against the particular Chinese leaders, just go visit the Chinese social media like WeChat, like Weibo. You would find tons of them. And a few people got arrested simply for criticizing the Chinese government. I agree with Joseph. This is really about uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's, let's say uh, order, law and order of the society, of the country. You know, I know like, uh, you know, Mr. Gui is a Swedish citizenship, uh, you know, but the citizenship uh, doesn't have much to do with, uh, you know, his being arrested or his being uh, detained, his being imprisoned. We were talking about like in, back in 2003, he was drunk, he was driving, he killed a, a college girl. And then in 2015, and he was uh, detained, he was arrested and put into prison to serve his prison term of two years. And he was released late last year. So that's the case. And I think, you know, the Chinese policemen, they have something better to do than do nothing, you know, going around just to harass Mr. Gui instead of others. Joseph Cheng, what does this say about Hong Kong, where you are, and your autonomy and your, your, your legal separation from China, given that a Hong Kong publisher can be nabbed on the mainland? We are very concerned with incidents like this because Gui was taken from Thailand to China. While even though he, he claims to have Swedish citizenship, 
At the same time, some of the colleagues of Mr. Guai in Hong Kong, they were also taken by mysterious people from Hong Kong to China. And it was also rather scary from our point of view that these uh, arrests or these detainees had to admit their guilt in front of the central television camera. Where are the basic rights of, uh, of detainees, even according to the criminal procedural law of China? There are strict stipulations as to the extent of detention before trial. There are strict stipulations to the um, announcement of the alleged crime of the actual prosecution of the detainees. There are protective measures allowing the uh, detainees' families to visit them, as well as their rights, the detainees' rights to employ lawyers to help their defense. Obviously, all these rights stipulated in the Chinese criminal law, in the Chinese criminal procedural law, have been violated. Mm -hmm. And this is scary to the people of Hong Kong, as well as an important, as well as doing important damage to the reputation of China. Okay, gentlemen, unfortunately, time is our great enemy. I have to wrap. I would have loved to have continued with this conversation, but I thank you very much for joining us.